I've just sent a report on potential Tesla structural battery pack batteries, which have all the advantages of NCM batteries that Tesla currently uses, but they come without cobalt or nickel. However, at the pack level, apparently these batteries in a Tesla structural battery pack could offer up to four times the energy density of LFP batteries. Is this report true? Is it legit? Well, I've done a little bit of research to find out what's going on here. Welcome to the channel. My name is Sam Evans. I'm coming to you from Melbourne, Australia. You are watching The Electric Viking. Welcome to all your new subscribers. We have made 1,000 videos over the last six months. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, and check out some of those 1,000 videos. There's a lot of interesting information there. You're not going to find anywhere else. So welcome back to everyone else. And thank you to our Patreon supporters. I really appreciate what you do. If you want to jump on the channel and support us, I'll put a link in the description below. Now, Nico Calabero from Talk News has reported that a cobalt nickel free lithium iron battery will be available very soon with 50% more energy dense density than LFP. But because the cells are prismatic, at a pack level, the energy, the energy density would be significantly higher again. He says the race to find the perfect match in battery chemistry has led to university teams and private companies around the world, including Tesla, obviously, to research multiple possible pathways. One of those companies, C4V, just introduced an interesting alternative to lithium batteries with LFP properties that are much more efficient. Interestingly, I did a bit of research. I read the article that he wrote. I did a bit of research and it turns out that C4V are already producing batteries in their own factory in New York right now. These batteries are already cobalt and nickel free and will be in full production by mid 2022. So the question is, who exactly are they going to provide these batteries to and why are they advertising them as being usable in structural battery packs? No one else that I know of has a structural battery pack. The only company is Tesla. So this did lead me to think that maybe this is a little trump card here for Tesla that they're not talking about, not advertising. It could be. Who knows? We'll find out, I guess, this year. If they're going to full production next year, surely we'll find out at some point this year. So Nico says that the batteries are a type of structural cell that come in a prismatic format. They're capable of adapting to different shapes and sizes depending on the application. And they can be used in cars, motorcycles, and even in electric planes, thanks to their high energy density, specific power, and high thermal stability. Mike from the company, or from C4V, tweeted, lithium ion cell technology, 40 to 50% higher energy density, five times more power density than LFP. I actually read the stats and it doesn't appear as though they're five times more energy dense than LFP. Maybe they're, they are saying they're five times more energy dense than LFP at the pack level, not at the cell level. Because at the cell level, it's nowhere near that. But maybe they mean at the pack level. I'm not sure. Now, they call it LISA, a revolutionary advancement in lithium battery tech. And they state on their website, it comes with the industry's first structural prismatic cell design with a refrigeration circuit to facilitate operations over a wide range of temperature scenarios from minus 40 to 194 Fahrenheit or minus 40 degrees Celsius to plus 90 degrees Celsius, meaning they provide greater efficiency at low temperatures, but also compatibility with ultra fast charging. The modules come with a solid structural design that allows for a high level of mechanical stability. Design modularity allows the manufacturer to meet the needs of the market in both small sized applications and large installations as well with the additional advantage of operating without any danger of losses in power or energy density. Here's another tweet from the company. Lyza brings a cobalt and nickel free lithium iron battery cell technology providing 40 to 50% higher energy density without nickel or cobalt. This is a big deal. Nickel and cobalt obviously are expensive, super expensive. The world will probably potentially run out of nickel by I think maybe five, six, seven years with the amount of demand there is right now. Will it really run out? Probably not. I think more mines are popping up, more companies are seeing this opportunity of providing nickel to battery manufacturers, but supply is certainly going to be constrained. The prices therefore will increase. Companies that then don't need nickel in their batteries will have a significant advantage versus companies that do need it. So this is essential really to be able to produce batteries that don't need nickel or cobalt going into the future. 
where obviously there's going to be a lot more scarcity in the markets for getting big supply of raw materials, including obviously lithium, nickel, and cobalt. If you can eliminate two of those problems, well, then you only have to deal with one problem. Now, apparently the energy density will be 228 watts per kilo in this at a cell level and 2000 watts per kilo of specific power. That's what it says on their website anyway. So the author of the article says it's important to point out the specific energy density in the cell. And another thing is a specific energy density in the pack, two different things. In this case, the designers have confirmed that in a structural battery configuration, the loss would be very, very small, meaning the figure would be 190 watts per kilo at the pack level, which is only 38 watt per kilo loss from going to cell to pack. Obviously, that's one of the big advantages of having a structural battery pack, that you only lose a small amount of specific energy density. There's one thing we should consider more. When, we, when I make videos, I should consider more, what's the energy density at the cell? What's it at the pack level? Because those are two things that matter. But then we've got to add to that. What about at the structural level? I mean, obviously every car manufacturer has a pack, right? But is that if that pack's not structural, we're going to be adding extra weight to the car by having additional unnecessary parts to the vehicle. And obviously that's what Tesla is trying to eliminate from their vehicles by having a structural battery pack. So this is a figure that places it at a competitive level as compared to LFP, which can also be compared to even some NCA or NMC models. The result is a type of cell 100% free of cobalt and nickel, which has between 40 to 50% more specific energy and up to five times more specific power than LFP cells. According to the information provided by C4V themselves, here are the characteristics of the battery. Nickel and cobalt free technology. Cell to chassis. Lysa enables freedom from modules to deliver an industry leading cell to chassis and cell to pack solution with superior performance metrics. Unique tabless prismatic design. Getting to the tabless issue as well. Obviously that's a Tesla feature. Does look like potentially something could be going on here with Tesla. This is what they say. It's the first ever tabless prismatic design that delivers extra fast charge and high power benefits. Embedded thermal management built in cell cooling loops enables Lyza to eliminate complicated thermal management systems, thereby reducing the weight and energy consumption of the battery pack. Strong inherent safety. Lyza technology also includes exceptional safety characteristics due to C4V's oxygen deficient patented BMLMP technology. I have no idea what that means, but hopefully I'll find out at some point in the future. Another key feature, they say, is the simplicity of its production. The volume utilization rate of a battery pack is improved by 30% over lithium iron phosphate, allowing it to be manufactured using high-speed processes capable of supporting ultra-fast solvent-free coating manufacturing speeds of 100 meters per minute, which the company estimates will mean a cost reduction of 30%. You've got to say, that's another feature of Tesla's 4680 battery cells. The solvent-free coating manufacturing enabling the battery production line to be much quicker and to take up less space. It almost sounds like something that Tesla's written themselves. I mean, obviously they haven't. It's a different company as far as we know, but it does have some remarkable things here that would suggest that there's no other automotive company in the world that'd be using these, but maybe there is. I don't know. If you know of anyone that you think would be using these cells that wouldn't be Tesla, let me know in the comments below because you'll be you'll be basically educating all of us here. Company CEO Shalesh Yupreet shared, I am super excited to unveil our revolutionary cell technology Liza today. This technology not only allows BMM, BMLMP chemistry to compete with cobalt and nickel based batteries at the pack level, but also enable gigascale production, another Tesla word, gigascale production, to be more sustainable with our breakthrough high speed manufacturing processes. A leading cell to pack or cell to chassis design that can bridge the gap between energy density and power density is a very safe mechanism. It allows us to cater for a, to various market verticals with a single cell technology platform. We are super charged as our OEM partners start sharing their experiences with us. They don't say who those OEM partners are, by the way. The good news for Tesla is that this technology is at hand in order to potentially improve even more, though not immediately for obvious reasons, existing battery tech or LFP tech used in the Model Y and the Model 3, Model X and the Model S. The author is pointing out here, he believes Tesla has proved many times in the past that it is capable of perfectly adapting to big technological changes. In fact, it basically leads the way 
despite some top politicians' opinions. And certainly this is something they will seriously consider, no doubt. I don't think that this is something they're going to consider now. Sorry, guys. This is something Tesla would have already had discussions with this company. I'm sure this company has been involving Tesla in their communications for many, many months. And this certainly wouldn't be news to Tesla when this article came out and was reported. C4V have not given any official dates as to when volume production will begin, but it appears from what I've seen that it will begin next year. Another thing they haven't done is disclose if they're working with Tesla or any other manufacturer for future contracts. But within the company's own roadmap, it has been indicated that tests were already being carried out on the batteries and they will enter production next year. So I've got to say, thank you for this information talk news and for making me go on a little bit of a goose chase here and find out more about this company. I'm fascinated and I honestly don't see how this could be anyone but Tesla that they're working with. Clearly they're working with someone. They're not just going out and doing all this. You're not just going to mass manufacture batteries as a startup unless you have someone buying the batteries. It just doesn't make sense. It has to be, surely it's got to be Tesla. If it was, this would be the seventh battery company that Tesla are working with. And that, my friends, is insane. Add that to their own production, and that is virtually scary. Could this eventually be some kind of monopoly? Could Tesla become that big and that powerful? I, I don't know, but it is interesting to see. Let me know in the comment section know what you think. What do you think? Is this legit? Do you know anything about this? Are you, do you work for the company? Can you give us a little bit of hint as to what's going on? Either way, I've got to say I'm excited. I'm excited to find out more news this year. I'm sure we're going to hear more about it this year and I'll bring that news to you. Have a great day. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.